The DJI Avata, I've flown it, I've crashed it, I've destroyed it, but was it worth the price tag that I've paid for it? After 475 days of owning the DJI Vata, what do I really think of it? In this video, we're gonna be diving into my experience of owning this drone over the last year and a bit to see whether it's worth the thousand pound plus that I paid for it all, especially when comparing it to the homemade FPV drones that you can build yourselves. What is the image quality really like from the onboard camera or would I recommend buying an action camera like this? And finally, have I outgrown it and will I be moving on to the much faster, much larger DJI FPV drone? Also, just to note before we go any further, all of the flying that you'll see inside this video is done using the FPV controller and not the motion controller, which you can get as standard with the DJI Avata. Now, when it comes to FPV drones, I'd like to think that I have a fair bit of experience. I was building and flying FPV drones way before I even bought a camera, let alone started this YouTube channel, probably around about seven or eight years ago. Back then I spent easily £1,500 on the, all the parts to build the drone, a soldering iron, a controller, the goggles, 12 batteries, a huge charger to be able to charge the batteries, even a fireproof bag to put the batteries in. And them 12 rechargeable batteries I had will only get me maybe 30 minutes of flying time. And I don't mean 30 minutes each, altogether 30 minutes. Now the Avata, even with the ProView combo and the Fly More kit, so you have three batteries, will only set you back just under 1,500 pounds. Plus the batteries you get with the Avata will easily get you 20 minutes each. That right there is a huge benefit of owning a DJI Avata. However, with it being DJI, it does have a few problems. With FPV drones in any shape or form, they aren't the easiest things to fly. With the traditional homemade FPV drones, if you took it out and smashed an arm, you could go home and replace the arm in maybe 10, 15 minutes. If you smashed the camera, you could order the part next day delivery, it would arrive at your door, a little bit of soldering and you're back in the air and it may only cost you 20 to 25 pounds. Now with the DJI Vata, if you damage the upper airframe or the propeller guard, you can get them sent out to you fairly cheap and you could replace them yourself. However, any major damage, this thing is going back to DJI to be repaired or maybe even replaced, which can become costly unless you have DJI refresh. Recently, I completely wrote off my DJI DJI Vata. It caught fire, it was that bad. Sent it back to DJI and within two weeks and around about 50 pounds, I had a brand new Avata on my doorstep. However, when DJI got in touch with me about the DJI refresh, they said that if I hadn't had refresh, it would have cost me over 250 pounds for the repair. So my advice before we go any further, if you're planning on buying one of these, make sure you get refresh. Now there is a possibility that you'll never quite cause as much damage as what I have because I normally fly with one of these controllers and not the motion controller that it normally comes with. And if you don't wanna spend hours and hours putting time in on a simulator before you actually go and take your first flight, having this is just an easy way to go about it. A few of the other things I really like about the DJI Vata is the pause button because if you're gonna have some major crash and you have the opportunity to press the pause button, it will just freeze in the air and the flight controller takes over for you. And I know before you even say it, yes, I should have used it the other week, it would have caused me a lot less stress, I know. But also the propeller guard on the Avata is a huge thing for me, but I will get to that in a moment. Now, when it comes to sharing any of the footage from the DJI Avata, like any drone or any camera, you want it to be the best quality possible straight out of camera. Now with the DJI Avata, you can film in the normal color mode, which will give you all the saturation and contrast you want. However, if you wanna get the best image quality out of your Avata, I highly recommend using Sydney D-like, but you will have to add more contrast saturation later on down the line. With the Avata, you can also alter all of the camera settings if you wish, but you cannot film in 25 frames per second. The lowest frame rate on my DJI Avata is 50 frames per second, but that isn't actually a bad thing. It's not a case of wanting to slow it down later on, but filming at 50 frames per second and putting it into a 50 frames per second timeline will actually make your footage look smoother. And that's why this video has been filmed at 50 frames per second and uploaded at 50 frames per second so you can see it naturally. Now as for the overall image quality, I'll let you decide for yourself. I always feel like the image quality is fairly good, but it does take a little bit of tweaking to get there. Mainly because the dynamic range from this camera is a little bit of a weak point. Let me explain. 
Before I take off with the DJI Vata at any point, I'll always alter the camera settings to see whether the exposure is correct in the goggles. Now this process is a little bit of trial and error, turning the drone on, holding it up, putting the goggles on and seeing what it looks like. Now if you want to get a full rundown of all the camera settings that I go through and also how I edit the footage to make it look like how you're seeing it, then let me know in the comments. But when I'm working out the exposure, in some situations I massively find myself having to choose between the details and the highlights and the details in the shadows. You can obviously expose for the highlights and then bring the shadows up in post, but you've got to remember we're not filming in log. Now if you want to get around the 25 frames per second situation and film in log, then my highest recommendation is to get a camera like the DJI Action 4. I got a bracket for my Avatar so I can attach any action camera that I wish on top. And with the Action 4, I can even film in portrait mode if I want to put any of my footage on social media. Also, another thing I found out from my crash with the Avatar is that if you're filming, you crash and the battery comes out, that file will be corrupt. Whereas if you're using something like the Action 4 and you crash, there's a good chance that your footage will be safe because this came off, went missing for a good hour, and it was still recording, it was perfectly fine. Also, before you go and grab an action camera and strap it to the top of your DJI Vata, having anything like an action camera on top of your Vata will change the way it feels when you're flying. It's not a bad thing and it's not impossible to fly with, the drone's flight characteristics will be a little bit different. So after 475 days, am I happy with my purchase of the DJI Vata or will I be parting ways and progressing to the much larger and faster DJI FPV? Remember the propeller guard I mentioned earlier? The reason I love that thing so much is because it saved me countless times. I've never flown the DJI Vata indoors. It isn't that I wouldn't want to, it's the fact that I'm not allowed. But if I had to fly indoors, I'd feel pretty confident in doing so. I highly doubt any major injuries would ever happen. And that's because the DJI Vata is much more designed to do that kind of flying, whereas the DJI FPV is much more of a freestyle racing drone that we see on the Drone Racing League. Just the difference in size of propellers between them two drones massively changed the flight characteristics. I know that with the DJI FPV, I could dive down a cliff and when it got near the bottom, I could comfortably pull up and wouldn't be too nervous. Whereas with the Avata and the smaller propellers on it, I'd feel a little bit uncomfortable in doing that. It's probably not impossible to do, but from my experience when I've flown the DJI Avata, anytime I dive down something, I always feel like it can't quite catch itself when it gets near the bottom. You have to go full throttle, it shakes a lot, and it just takes a lot of time for the drone to react to your input. But that's because the DJI FPV and the DJI Avata are simply just two very different drones. Two very different designs capable of two very different styles of flying. For me, it's not really a case of wanting to upgrade to a different drone. It's more of a case of does the DJI FPV offer me the capability that I want for something over what the DJI Avata offers me. But regardless, the experience that you get from flying an FPV drone is amazing and I don't think I'll ever get bored of it. So no, I won't be parting ways with the Avata just yet. Now, if you've got to this part of the video and you're feeling inspired to buy an FPV drone and take on the task of learning to fly FPV, then I highly recommend you watch this video to save yourself having to use DJI Refresh on your first flight. I'll see you there.